Hello, everybody. I'm getting finished setting up. Um, please let me know how the sound is. I think that the background audio might be a little loud, uh, but I'm not totally sure. So please let me know what you think. Um, I'll be on in just a bit. All righty. This is my dance to this song. What do you guys think? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, uh, today we are going to be doing some uh, some crocheting, you know, like we always do. Uh, today is Father's Day, if you aren't aware. Happy Father's Day if you are out there and you are a dad and you're watching. Happy Father's Day. And if you are my dad and watching, special Happy Father's Day. Today we're going to be crocheting Bigfoot Bobby, which is 
especially perfect for Father's Day because it is actually named, he's named after my dad, whose name is Bobby, not Bigfoot. <laughs> uh, you can see a picture of it right here. So this is what we're going to be making today. I got to see my dad uh, this uh, a couple of days ago, so it was really nice. He came up to visit for just a night. He had something he had to do today, so he just came up to say hi real quick. Um, but it was really nice. I hope you guys get a chance to say hello to your fathers uh, and to anybody out there that uh, you feel deserves a happy Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to everybody out there. Let's uh, let's get rocking and rolling. So today, uh, let's go through the materials first and then we talk about you know the support and all that stuff. We uh, This is what you're gonna need for this pattern. You'll need uh, three different kinds of yarn. Now, normally I use all worsted weight cotton yarn, but for this pattern specifically, I like using a fuzzier brown yarn. You can see how it's kind of got this little fuzz to it. Uh, I like this because, you know, it's more big footy. You can also comb it out if you want to make it uh, really, really fuzzy. Here is a sloth that I made with this exact same yarn. I combed it out so you can see how fuzzy they get if you want it to be like that. Uh, I'm using like, it's like a, I think it's 100% wool for the body. Oh, I heard that. Cooperlicious, dude, thank you. Uh, uh, I'll get to that in a second. Um, I'm also using two alternate colors. We're going to use beige. This is going to be for the um, face tone and the skin tone. So like the bottom of the feet and the face. And then you'll need a, like a main color. And that's going to be for the nose. You can see a little nose there. Uh, is going to be in your main color. Let me go ahead and focus this a little closer here. Um, so those are the types of yarn you're going to need. You'll also need some safety bead eyes. I'm going to be using six millimeter safety bead eyes in this video. I like them. I like them having little tiny eyes, uh, just like my dad. <laughs> not really. My dad. I guess he doesn't not have tiny eyes. He doesn't have big eyes. I don't know. <laughs> I'm in a weird mood today. I'm always in a weird mood. Um, I'm going to be using a size G four millimeter crochet hook today. A pair of scissors, of course. A darning needle. I like using a crimped end darning needle like this. Helps me get into hard to reach spots. You'll need two full pipe cleaners, and these are gonna be for the arms and legs to help our character stand up and whatnot. Um, you might also want to use wire instead of pipe cleaners if you really want them to stand up uh, It can be a little bit difficult to make them stand up. So we might make them sitting in today's video. I'm not sure You'll also uh, these are not necessary, but highly suggested uh, Some heavy coins like nickels. Uh, these are gonna go in the bottom of the feet to help them stand up I actually think I'm going to try something different in this video uh, and I might not use these heavy nickels instead. I might be using magnets because my dad works uh, He has his own little um, uh, uh, Blacksmithing shop at at my uh, at my childhood home. He built a big blacksmithing thing in the backyard So I thought it might be kind of fun to do little mini magnets instead so he can like stick them to anything That's metal that's in his shop. I just thought that might be fun um, it, it should also keep it weighed down. So I'm gonna try to do that I think in this video and of course you're gonna need some stuffing This is more than enough stuffing for this video. So we probably won't use all this, but you will need some Um, what else? I guess that's all you need for this pattern if you want to get kits with all the materials that you need um, You can find the pattern for this and the kits for this right here at clubcrochet.com slash Bigfoot the kits and the pattern are actually on sale today the patterns off I think a dollar off today um, so which is like 33% off which is pretty significant and the um, the kits are also I think they are 10 to 15% off I'm not really sure I, I I just made them an even number I think they're like $12 or $13 or something today um, so I yeah give a little bit of discount there for Father's Day uh, if you would like to purchase one I would very much appreciate it if you like to help support this channel, other than purchasing kits, um, you can also support a bunch of other ways. So let's go ahead and talk about that while you guys are getting materials. Um, the first and probably the best way, let me turn down this music just a little bit. It's just a little distracting for me. There we go. Um, sunshine, I will explain what happened to the Stitch stuff in just a sec. Uh, uh, I made a last minute change essentially um, because I was having a bit of a panic attack last night but we'll talk about that in a second 
Um, if you'd like to help support this channel, there's a few ways you can do so. The first way, and the easiest and the cheapest way, is just to like and subscribe. Like this video down below, subscribe to the channel, maybe share this with someone that you think might also enjoy my videos or my live streams and stuff like that. Um, that would be awesome. Uh, another way you can help support is by becoming a Club Crochet member. That's actually probably the best way to support. Members get early access to future patterns, they get exclusive access to all the patterns on my website, including this one, and they get monthly kits mailed directly to their door each month with all the materials they need to make whatever we're making that month. Uh, this month, well, I'll show you, I'll, sh I'll tell you what, I'll show you one of the two things that you can make this month with the Club Crochet kit. Um, so this month's kit is going to be for Florence the Flamingo or something else. Uh, so it's going to be a Flamingo kit and you can sign up now on the website and you'll get this this month for this month's kit. It also makes a different thing as well if you'd like to instead make something else. But we'll show you that in a second. Um, and these go out at the end of the month. You also, this month, if you sign up now for Club Crochet, oh thank you so much Tina! Um, I will get to those also in just a second. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. where was I? Oh yeah, if you sign up this month, if you're like a brand new sign up, you also get a brand spanking new pin. That's right, I got pins made. Aren't they cute? So these are brand new. I'm gonna be adding these to the shop. Uh, I really wanted to get them added today, but it was a really long day yesterday. So I just didn't get the time. So I'll probably be adding it tonight or tomorrow. Um, but yeah, these are brand new pins that are going to be added to the shop. Uh, and if you sign up for a pro membership this month, you actually also get this in your kit. So that's pretty cool. It's like for it's like a you know a bonus for trying to trying to encourage people to sign up for Club Crochet kits. So yeah, that's this month's kit. Um, you can also help support by purchasing things in the shop. We got merch like this we got a bunch of little stickers like these it's very cool there's kits available yada yada blah 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 and the last way to support is with a donation tina and cooperlicious are already way ahead of you and they donated um so if you donate today now i took the bar off the side here because we hit the we hit the cap I just haven't had the time to make the giveaway, but we're gonna be doing a big giveaway uh, to say thank you for all the support um, over the past, I guess it's been like six months. So thank you so much for all your support. We're gonna be doing a big giveaway ASAP. I don't have it prepped yet because it was just a long week, but there is gonna be a big giveaway very, very soon. Um, and if you donate, you also get, uh, Karina, thank you. Um, you also get a little character that's going to be on screen during the live stream. So, let's start with Cooperlicious. Um, if you want anything specific in the backgrounds, make sure to add in the note when you do a little tip. Um, because otherwise, I'm just going to put something out that I like or that I think you might like. Um, so, let's start with Cooperlicious. And let's start... Um, let's do... Let's do um, Captain Calamari. This is for you, Cooperlicious. I know you like Captain Calamari. So we're going to keep little Calamari out there right for you. That's going to be for Cooperlicious. And then we got Tina supporting all the way from Denmark. And Tina, we're going to put out for Tina. Um, mm, mm, how about, what's this guy? What's this guy looking? Mm, no, he's, he's boring. We don't win. Well, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean he's boring. It's a little goblin, but he doesn't got anything special on him. Oh, who? Here's a good. Here's a good goblin. How about a goblin for Tina? So this is a little goblin that I actually crocheted this week. I made this helmet just because I thought it'd be fun to make a helmet for him, um, and I decided to try using the little the way that I make the squid hat head, like the top of the squid there, to add a little fin to this helmet. Um, his helmet actually comes off, which is kind of cool. So this is gonna be out for Tina. We'll put it right here. And then we got one more for Miss Karina. Thank you so much, Karina. Uh, let's see, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Let's do um, let's do an oldie. Let's do something. Let's do something that I made a while back. Um, how about? Um, how about? 
Oh, Gandalf. Who don't like Gandalf? Let's put Gandalf out here. This is a super duper old pattern. I don't even think this is on the website. Um, probably should add it to the website. Uh, but yeah, it's a little pod person, Gandalf. We'll put Gandalf out there for you, Karina. And again, let me know if you end up donating. Please let me know uh, if you want any anything specific out there. Okay, and let's just get rock and rolling. We'll put these guys to the side, and I'll explain why we're not crocheting stitched characters today. Um, so I had a whole plan for this live stream uh, as of like midnight last night. I was getting set up for the stream. And I wanted to do a stitched live stream. If you don't know what stitched is, stitched is my tabletop game that you make from home. Um, you crochet all your pieces and then you play a game with them. And it's super cool. If you want to learn more about it, you can just find everything about that at stitchthegame.com. And essentially, I'm working on a book for stitched. And for the book for stitched, oh, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned, I'm starting on the arms if you are crocheting along with me. Um, in, so I'm working on a book for Stitched, and for the book, I need to make a brand new cover. Um, I need to make like the cover of the book and the cover of the board game box because it's going to be coming in like a big, you know, cl classic board game box. So I needed to make stuff for the background of the cover picture that we're going to end up taking. Uh, and I really wanted to do that in today's live stream, but it was just so, I was getting nervous. I was getting like really bad anxiety about like, okay, what are we doing today? How are we doing this? I don't understand. I was really tired too. And then I thought, oh, tomorrow's Father's Day. We should do something Father's Day related. And then, and then I just, I just snapped. I was like, you know what? We're doing Father's Day stuff today. I want to crochet something for my dad and I'll get to stitch next time because I just couldn't, I just couldn't, <laughs> honestly. I was just like kind of freaking out. Uh, so yeah, we'll be doing stitch next time. We're gonna be doing, um, probably crocheting a big background, uh, or we're not gonna be crocheting the background. We're probably gonna be making the background out of uh, like felt. And then we're going to make, um, we'll probably crochet uh, an orc for it and stuff like that. So. That all is coming soon. I'm so sorry if you were here and you're prepped to make stitched pieces. I'm really sorry. I wasn't able to get it prepped in time and I just kind of was freaking out last night and decided to switch things up. Uh, Mackenzie, how many stitches do I do in the magic ring? In the magic ring, you do six single crochets in the magic ring for this pattern. Um, I think for all the parts of this pattern, but definitely for the arms here. Okay, let's, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this real quick. And Jane, thank you so much for your donation. Oh, you made, what a wonderful request. Jane requests Monsieur Quack, uh, Monsieur Quack, uh, about, ah. Monsieur Quack, bonjour mon ami. Look at how cute Monsieur Quack is. He's like, ho, oh, oh, ho, what are you doing here? Are you crocheting with us? We, oui, we, oui. Quack. <laughs> Thank you so much for your donation, Jane. We'll go ahead and toss this guy right here. And he's gonna be out here watching you, watching me. Watching you watching me. T don't stress, we love it. Thank you so much. I, I just, yeah, I don't know. I was kind of just, um, I didn't know how it was going to work. I just have to think it through a little bit more. And I didn't want to come into this live stream and be panicking and mess up because we're live. You know, if I do anything here, it, it's there. It happens. So I just really wanted to be prepared before I do that. Um, but yeah, I thought it would be kind of fun for the start of the stitched live stream is to... Uh, start by showing off my stitched set that I have. That's my personal set that I take to people's houses and play stitched with. And I think it's really cool. So I thought it'd be pretty fun to show that off in the start of the live stream and then 
go from there. Um, yeah, I think we're just gonna start it next time. Uh, we're gonna do, we're gonna be moving to Wednesdays uh, for like every other week. I'm having a hard time doing every single Sunday, and the next Sunday, let's see, I think next Sunday we had plans. We were gonna go to Portland, so I moved it to the Wednesday after the live stream to the Wednesday after. Yada wada yada. I think we're just going to be moving to Wednesdays, and I thought it'd be pretty smart to do the Stitch live streams on the Wednesdays, and then regular old crochet longs on the Sundays. I'm not sure. Mackenzie, how many rows of increases are we going to do? Well, uh, that depends on where you're at in the pattern. If you, you really should check out the pattern itself. There, um, this this video is not really going to be a tutorial. It's going to be more of just like a crochet along where we make something together and yeah, I can help you out with like very specific parts, but I'm not going to go through the whole pattern just because it's, that's just a lot of work and I'd rather just kind of hang out and crochet with you. Dylan's working on a crocheted ox. Pretty cool. Is it the year of the ox? I think it is, right? I think that's the Chinese New Year. I'm not totally sure though. Yes, Monsieur Quack in uh, Captain Calamari. I don't know why Captain Calamari got a, an accent, but he did. They did. I don't know. I don't know what Captain Calamari uh, identifies as. <laughs> a pirate. Captain Calamari defines themselves as a pirate. Identifies themselves as a pirate. Yes, it was a long week for me. I don't know about you guys. I was just like, ah, this week. It felt like every day I was catching up to the past two days. The sloth is not being nice. Where's the sloth? <laughs> I need to start adding... Um, I want to start adding little little things that pop up in the live streams. I thought that'd be pretty fun. Yes, long week for you too, Crafty Chats. Yeah, I don't know. It was just like one of those weeks where I was having some days where it was just hard to get up. I was like, no, I don't want to start. <laughs> those are tough ones. But sometimes you just got to push through it. Sleep longer the next day. No, that's not true. Go to bed earlier. That's what I need to start doing. So, my dad is uh, awesome. His name is Bobby. Um, gave it, gave that name to me, actually. It's my middle name, uh, if you wanted to know. My name is Louie Bob. <laughs> I think that's kind of funny. And, yeah, they came up to visit on Friday? just for dinner they just came up to for dinner and then they kept going past going to visit my aunt um, but my dad is wonderful he is a very uh, creative person uh, I think that's probably obvious to a degree because of me they raised a very creative son uh, my mom and my dad are both pretty dang creative my dad is very um, my dad is very, what's the word? Like, it's less that he's really creative and more that he's really uh, clever when it comes to like knowing how things go together, knowing how to make things. He's very good at that, uh, which is why he gets into just different kinds of crafts. He built a, he built a car. He's done, he does metalworking now. He got really into welding for a while. Um, yeah, he's just a kind of a crafty dude in his own way. Not with crochet, but with other things. I'm pretty sure he's never even tried to crochet. <laughs> but that's okay. Crochet's my thing. I don't... Hey, Melbell. I don't know if he is here. Uh, I think he is currently helping my aunt and uncle move. I don't know, but I'm going to give him a call right after this live stream. And tell everybody that he said hi, or that I'll tell him that everybody says hi. 
Sabrina, is that a wizard? Yes, it is. That's a, that's a little Gandalf. It's a really old, old, old pattern that I did um, just a long time ago. I thought it would be a kind of a fun thing to add out for, um, I think that one was for Karina. So these are little, um, I guess they're kind of live stream, or they're, they're donation uh, avatars. Let's go with that. That's your avatar if you are... If you have helped donate. Let's get this focused a little better. There we go. Oh, Panny! Panny says, subscribe for my... Oh, okay. Yeah, Panny, I can do that. Uh, I actually have a rough draft written for a pattern for a Pac-Man. Uh, so yeah, I can totally do that. I will I will add that to the list of Things to make gosh. I got so many patterns to make but I that is a very good formal request and I will definitely take that into strong consideration Especially since I already basically have it made I just need to do a video for it one two three four five six seven eight nine Okay, so I need 11 rounds of single crochets here, and then we'll make another arm. And I like this pattern because the arms and the legs, once you get the main part of them done, it's basically just single crochets making a little tube. Make a little tube. How's your guys' Sunday? Is it is it hot where you are? It is hot pretty much everywhere here in California except for San Francisco it is nice and cool here in San Francisco but everywhere else it is like sweltering right now One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. yeah okay one more round and then we'll have an arm made yeah but California has been like Everywhere else you dr literally you drive right outside of San Francisco, and it's like oh My gosh, how do people live in this? <laughs> Texas is on fire. Yeah Yep, that's That's our that's the world now we're just gonna get it's just gonna get warmer and warmer guys Bummer So hot in Texas Stay safe out there. Wow, all the way in Texas. Yeah, it's got to be really warm in Texas. This feels like it's a tiny arm, but maybe it's not. I guess it's a normal size arm. Okay. So we got, uh, I think we're done with this then. So we got round one done, and then it was three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. So now we can take our stitch marker out. Get started on another one of these. That was pretty quick, though. Already done with one of the arms. No bad, no bad. Let's get Sven out here real quick. Well, actually, I couldn't find Sven. He's hiding somewhere. I took him out into the other room uh, the other day because I wanted to make a new ogre and use him as inspiration. I really wanted to replicate his uh, his overalls. But let's see if we can find him. Because I could use, I could use his coffee advice. Where is he? Sven, come out, come out wherever you are. Hmm. All right, I guess we'll have to drink coffee without Sven. That's good, anyhow, because then he can't judge us. You just want to jump inside the fridge and live there. I remember when I was a kid, I would do that. I would l open the fridge door and just, like, stand there and, oh, this is hot. She has the ghost already made and waiting for the Pac-Man boss. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll try working on that soon. I think we're gonna have to like start doing, um, once Stitched is, once we do our big Kickstarter for Stitched, I think we'll start doing um, 
some a month or two of video games. Well, maybe we'll take a break from too many games and then we'll come back to games. I don't know. I don't know the future. You know me. I like switch my minds all the time. Just like today's live stream. I was like, we're going to make one thing. And then I was like, actually, I'm freaking out. We're going to make something else today. Whoopsies. There we go. Too hot to crochet. Oh, I hate that, Beth. I hate when that happens when you're like, I can't. I just can't right now. Honestly, that's one of the reasons that I got into Amy Gurumi was because it's not as like it's not as annoying to crochet a bunch of Amy Gurumi in the heat as it is when you crochet like a a sweater or a hat or something. In the heat, it's like, oh gosh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> this is the worst. I remember when I used to make hats uh, a lot. So when I was in high school, I used to make a lot of beanies. Um, like I would make, I think I've made legitimately thousands of beanies. And I remember when it got really warm and I had like beanie orders. I was like, oh God, I don't want to do this right now, but I have to. Let's see, did I mess up somewhere? Oh no, we're good. Wait, why is that coming out like that though? What's going on? Why is that stitch being all weird? See that? Hmm. Maybe I just crocheted really loose in that stitch. How weird. Bum, bum, ba, da, bum. All right, let's just keep rocking and rolling. Did you make sweaters in 35 degree weather and then wear them? You're crazy, Divine Rose. That doesn't sound fun. <laughs> I'm guessing you mean Celsius, by the way. Here in America, we are ding-dongs and we don't know Celsius because, I don't know, because we want to make life more difficult. I never learned how to read Celsius right. I would like to though. I should just change my thermometer to Celsius and then force myself to understand it. Because I think that would better my, you know, that'd be nice. Ooh. The downstairs neighbors are moving furniture. It sounds like an earthquake. Okay. Oh, Beth, really? Felix and Beth say. Amigurumi feels more difficult because it's so small. I accidentally broke my hook trying to pull through. You gotta get a better hook. That sounds like you're using a, like a wooden or plastic crochet hook. I made that mistake when I first started crocheting. I used a plastic crochet hook and broke it. And I just kept going back and buying this a plastic crochet hook and breaking it. I think I broke like 10 plastic crochet hooks before I decided to finally buy a metal one. <laughs> yeah, I bet you were. Coffee and crochet was definitely forced to use Celsius. Because I'm assuming they used Celsius in, in uh, Korea. I agree, trip a little. I mean, logically, I agree. I think Celsius does make more sense. Same thing as the metric system. I think it just, it does make more sense. But being raised, not like, when I was learning how to read uh, measurements, I learned with silly little Fahrenheit and inches and feet. And that stuff really solidifies when you are a little kid and it's hard to it's hard to learn otherwise and make it a very natural thing you know like like learning language for example now when i learn different languages you know when i practice my french or japanese or whatever 
I'm consistently converting that to English in my brain. So when I say like, I don't know. Uilu cafe. Like, where's the coffee? I'm thinking of saying, where's the coffee in English? And then converting it to French instead of natively saying it in French because I learned it in French. Like, if I learned French and English simultaneously when I was a baby, it'd be a lot easier. I kind of wish my parents did that. They, like, spoke a different language to me or taught me Celsius, Fahrenheit, or Celsius and the metric system when I was a really young kid and made it a necessity for me to use those measurements. Because that would have really helped me. I'm going to take that... I'm going to take that... Uh, take note of that when I have a kid one day. I'll try talking to them in broken Japanese and then they'll <laughs> learn terrible Japanese. <laughs> But yeah, it was a long week. I am tired. My best friend is moving too. He's moving from San Francisco all the way to Pittsburgh. Tomorrow's my last goodbye with him. Bye, Emilio. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be sad. I mean, I'm gonna see him again in August, but still, you know, when your friend is moving, it's, it's a bummer. Oh, you don't like that we use month, date, year. I kind of do. I do like the month, the day, year rather than the, than the day, month, year. I, I totally understand why you would rather have the day, month, year. But I do. But I don't like that the that the number for the month can be smaller than the number for the day. You know, because I don't like it that it could be thirty. 221 or whatever that that messes with my brain do I know Spanish or just French and English I don't really know Spanish I know Spanish uh, I know like little things in Spanish but that's just from living in Southern California you hear a lot of Spanish in Southern California Wait, one two three four five six seven eight but I would not say that I know Spanish. Uh, I would say I barely know French. And I don't really know Japanese. I can read I can read the letters of Jap the alphabet of Japanese. And I know a few things like Hachimase Watashiwa Luidas. But I don't know much after that. Wow, you had an interview in Korean on Friday. How, so Coffee and Crochet, question for you. How long did it take you to get comfortable speaking Korean? Did you know Korean very well before you moved to Korea or did you just jump into the deep end and figure it out? One, two, three, four, five. Eight, nine. Six, seven. Okay, so we got two more rounds. Oh, I know a lot more French than I do Spanish. What's the fastest way to learn in either language? Curses? Yeah, I think curse. Uh, uh, being cursed. <laughs> I know. I know what you meant, Alicia, or Alice. But I think if you were cursed by a witch, to only speak in a different language, that would probably help you learn that language really well. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, but what's the fastest way you learn in, e in either language? I would say the fastest way to learn is to go there and immerse yourself. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah, one, two. Ah. 
back. Sec. Um, seize. Um, the. There we go. I also really like Duolingo. I think Duolingo is pretty helpful for learning other languages. And it's free and cool and fun and gamified. I like it. <laughs> Crafty chat. Heard Alice and she was like, oh, Alice, I'm Alice. You're in Wonderland. Oh, we need to get rid of the stitch marker. Look at all this fuzz. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. Let's see if I can get it focused on the fuzz. I guess I can't. But there is fuzz there. Let's get my hand in focus. There we go. Um, okay, so we made the arms. I can check that off. Now let's go on to the feet. Our feet. Uh, Trip a little is fully bilingual in Maltese and English. You think in both languages, but don't know what it is. But when you're angry, I usually think and speak in Maltese. But when you're calm, it's English. Interesting. Hmm. What is Maltese closest to? I don't even know what Maltese sounds like. Five and six. So we're making the feet now if you're crocheting along with me. I'm making the feet now. I got my arms made. Oops. The feet are a little tricky because you got to use mini bobble stitches and stuff. But I do like them. Let's do another one of those. Maltese is like 60% Arabic, but written in Roman letters. The rest is just a mash of Italian, French, and English. Languages are weird. <laughs> just a bunch of just a bunch of different languages smashed together, and suddenly, boom! It's a new language. Languages are weird. Yeah, there we go. If I could learn any language, hmm, I wonder what I'd, what would I learn? I probably would try to learn Japanese better. Oh, this is just three single crochets, not three increases. One, two, and then we're gonna change colors, okay. Whoa, Gwyneth. Oh, that reminds me. Okay, hey, everybody in the stream, in the live stream, in the chat right now. Um, we are doing a big competition right now. Let me turn down the music just a little bit again. The song got really loud. So if you would like to um, compete in a competition, it's not it's less of a competition, more of a challenge, I would say. Um, this was Coffee and Crochet's idea. We want, we're doing a giveaway, essentially, where if you crochet an octopus and uh, make a little picture with it, you can enter to win a um, $20 gift card to the Club Crochet store. If you wanna learn more about this, it's very cool, and there haven't been that many submissions yet, so your likelihood of winning is like not bad at all. Um, pretty good, actually. So if you want to enter to win it or learn more about the rules, go to clubcrochet.com challenge. Uh, 
Act actually, Coffee and Crochet, do you mind putting that in the chat real quick? Uh, just just clubcrochet.com slash challenge and enter to win. You can learn all the rules there. But essentially, you crochet a an octopus and uh, you have a chance at winning 20 bucks to the Club Crochet store. You can use it on a kit or a um, Club Crochet membership or stickers or really whatever you want. It's pretty cool. And there hasn't been that many people submitting, so you got a pretty good chance of winning it. All you gotta do is crochet an octopus and you can put a hat on it. You can do really whatever you want. One, two, three, and then a decrease. Oopsies. So this week I have been watching a lot of, I just lowered Gwyneth's chance of winning. <laughs> I suppose, I suppose that's true. Uh, the deadline for submission, I think is Six days from now? Let's see. It's on the it's on the that website. Let's see. Clubcrochet.com slash challenge. C H A. Uh submissions end June twenty sixth. So you have six days to do to submit to win. Um here, I'll put the challenge in the thing here. C C There we go. Yeah, so you got um, about about six more days to enter. But the good thing is that that pattern is really quick. You can probably do it in like an hour most. So what we're going to try to do in this one is we're going to try, I think I'm going to try putting magnets in first and then maybe I can fit a nickel even over the magnets. That's what I'd really like to do because then he'd have really weighed down feet, but they'd also have magnets in it so he could stick to whatever he wants. That's the plan for our Bigfoot fella here. Hopefully it works out. Okay. Let's grab, let's snag some magnets now. Oh, I got one more stitch actually. Right there. Okay. So I'm thinking we can probably just do. Let's see. Let's see here. I think I can get away with just doing two magnets per foot. go magnet first this magnets like huh. okay so we're gonna do magnets first I like to put the magnet on the bottom to keep the magnets on the inside close there and then we'll try adding a nickel on top of the magnets now the nickel is pretty tough to add in there because it's like just perfectly sized but we'll make it work we're gonna figure it out I'm gonna go ahead and keep the magnet, the bottom magnet there just for a little bit so that it stays into position. I like to keep crocheting. Does 
that was our round of single yeah okay okay we're on it we're going we're doing great whoa Mackenzie you made a micro crochet Bigfoot that's insane can I see a picture post a picture on the discord channel I want to see that that is wild how did you do that that must have taken you so long Uh, Gwyneth, it doesn't have to be, uh, it does not have to be summer themed. Um, you, it can be summer themed, but you can do whatever kind of theme you want. Just make your octopus look cool and unique and you, yeah, unique to you. You can add a top hat or you can add a bow tie or you could make him have some crazy colors by doing weird color changes in the middle of the pattern. Or you can make a giant one using giant crochet uh, uh, or giant yarn. Anything you want to do. Okay, that foot's coming together. Okay, so I'm on, I think I'm on round seven. I gotta count my stitches for this round. Five, six, and seven. There we go. Right, so it's going to go like up like that. All right, now I'm on round eight. Ooh, I got something even better for you, Crafty Chats. Crafty Chats said um, they love how crochet is the original 3D printing. I tell people that crochet is the original 3D printing. Huh? Pretty good. 3D. Yeah, I like it. But yes, I think that is very cool also. I'm actually working with a 3D printer right now, um, a 3D designer. Uh, they are doing designs for stitched pieces because I want to give a new option when I do this Kickstarter for people that have 3D printers. If they wanted to 3D print their own stitched pieces, they can do it that way as well. So I'm working with a 3D designer to make 3D designs for stitched pieces. I thought that was kind of cool. The wings are so cool. <laughs> Jane said that they are making the Rough Draft Dragon. The wings are so cool, but you hate making them. That's so funny that you say that. I love making those wings. I actually made a bunch of extra wings just because I enjoyed doing it. It's just, they're tricky. I like them. I don't know. I don't know. I like them. Excellent dad joke. Yeah. Ready printing. Dude, that's crazy. Mackenzie, did you already post that to Discord? I really want to see that. That is really wild. That you made a micro crochet one. I'm going to check. Whoa. Oh my gosh, I love that. Okay, sorry. I just jumped into the to the discord to and there's all these crocheted octopi that are so cute I love it okay let me see look what I made oh you haven't posted it there yet well I'll see it when I see it ying x could we double confirm whether the octopus needs to be summer themed it does not need to be summer themed it can be summer themed if you'd like it to be summer themed, and uh, uh, but it does not have to be summer themed. No, 
It just needs to be an octopus. That's the that's the one rule. Um, Gwyneth, is there another way to get the pirate hat pattern without getting the kit? Yes, I just wasn't able to finish it. Last Sunday, I said that I was going to have the pirate pattern finished uh, later that day or the day after. And I totally dropped the ball and I didn't finish it. So I need to finish it uh, again. I need to finish it today or tomorrow. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. If you um, have been waiting for the pirate hat pattern, I'm really, really sorry it's taken me so long. There's just this little thing that I need to fix for it to make it work right, and I just haven't had the time or motivation to finish it up, and I'm so sorry about that. But I will get it done ASAP. One, two, three. I think I need four random. Yeah. Uh, uh. <sighs> nice yawn. You ever have one of those yawns where it just feels like, ah, oh, feel so much better after you yawn? Probably because you have like a lack of oxygen in your brain. And your brain's like, give me oxygen. That's how my brain talks to me. Because, uh, excuse me, Lewis, um, I would like some oxygen, please. And then I yawn. Is that how you guys do it too? Right? I'm not crazy. Who said I was crazy? Which one of you burbs said that? <laughs> okay, so we got... Stitch one. Alright. We got a foot made. Hey, hey! Cool. We're, we're flying, guys. We got a foot, two arms... We need one more foot, and then we can start working on our body. But before I get to the second foot, did I make? Did I give any of you a yawn? Did I? Did I? Did, am I contagious? Is my yawn contagious? Oh, our yarn paired with a full body stretch. Oh yeah. Let's see if I can do a neck crack. Let me let me f drink a little bit more coffee. Here we go. Ready? Sometimes I can get some really good cracks in these live streams. Here we go. First, let's start with the hands. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Little ASMR. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we can't get that neck. Ready? Try the other way. Oh, I can't get anything over there. Back. Oh. Still, we got that one good neck one. Whew. Like opens it opens the the passageways for my brain to get blood. That's what I think. <laughs> Definitely not right, but that's what I think. Okay, so now we're on another foot, and uh, yeah, let's keep on keeping on. <laughs> Chiropractic ASMR, that's me. That's what I'm doing. Okay, I need to go to live dashboard here. All right. Wow, Gwyneth, you're flying, dude. Just finished her third octopus already. It's crazy. Yeah, so quick. I love that pattern, though, because because of that exact reason. They're so quick to make. Um. Okay. I remember. One, two, three, four. Okay. 
Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I was thinking about the stitched live stream idea. Because I think we're going to be making an orc next time. But we'll do an orc with like... Um, I want to do an orc with a bow for the background. Because I need a... I need like very specific things in the background. I don't know. I need to think it through a little bit more. Hence why we're not doing that today. Pretty good. Tighten that a little bit. So what else are you guys making today? Oh, I love that, Gwyneth. Let's do that. We will do that. Gwyneth said, uh, what if you crochet Bigfoot wearing a necktie for Father's Day? And I think that's a really good idea. So we'll do that exact, th exact thing. We'll give him a little necktie. I wanted to do something special for him, but I didn't want to do anything that we've done before, like adding a... Uh, chef hat or something, you know? But a necktie is perfect. And then it's just single crochets. One. Switch over to a brown yarn. Oh, Cooper, delicious. Dude, you're making a a jock orc. That is very cool. Are you gonna give him like a football helmet or something? What are you gonna how are you gonna do that? I'm so curious. I wanna see it. That is really cool. Iris is making turtles. Felix is making some granny squares. Are you making a blanket, Felix? What are you gonna do with those granny squares? Oh, we might be able to do a best dad mug. Actually, that'd be kind of fun. We'll do something. We'll give him we'll give him some dad we'll give him some dad vibe stuff. Maybe a mustache. Okay, so I'm on round four here. I gotta say it out loud or else it doesn't happen. You're just seeing what would look, which look better. Oh, for granny squares? Like which are your, which granny square you like the most? I was thinking about a game. You know me, I'm always thinking about games. And I was had an idea this one's this foot is actually feels like I have crocheted it very tightly and it's maybe a little bit smaller than my other foot. So I'm gonna try to put in the the um, magnets and nickel now while it's just a little bit more open than normal. So I'm placing it against the other foot so that the magnets connect to each other. I'm stretching that out and then see if we can get this nickel in there now. Oh yeah, see that's gonna be a hard fit. Hmm. Gotta crochet too tightly. Well, maybe we will have to do it in the next round. Stretch this foot out a little bit. Make her life a little bit easier later on. Okay. Rebecca, what did you miss? 
Um, well, Monsieur Quack was teaching us French, uh, but I'm pretty sure he what he was speaking uh, Italian. So I don't know what he was doing there. But that's what you missed. <laughs> Am I excited for the Olympics? Yes, I am excited for the Olympics. I think that's going to be really cool. Um, I mean, as long as they do them. I don't know. They, I feel like they keep like pushing it off or something. But uh, it does seem kind of fun. I like the Summer Olympics quite a lot. I think my favorite sport at the Olympics... I like the diving a lot. It's fun to watch. Or hurdles. Hurdles are really fun, too. Or ping pong. Honestly, I really like the ping pong. They do ping pong, right? Yeah, they do ping pong. I think that's... I I, I really like it because you see them playing it and you're like, I play, I've played ping pong. Whereas when you see someone doing like crazy, amazing dives, you're like, I can't ever do that. But I know how to play ping pong. <laughs> Maybe that's why. I don't know. That's why I like it. Thank you, Nicole. I really like ping pong. I like playing it a lot. Okay, now let's try to get this in here when it's gonna be even more difficult. Let's start with the magnets. Oh, they're upside down. There we go. Okay, magnets in there. And then nickel. Nickel! The qualifying for the Olympic hurdles is today. Wow. Cool. Come on, come on, Nickel. Get in there. This one's being, it's being difficult. Get in there, get in there, nickel. There we go. Now he's got a heavy foot. Okay. He's got five cents in that foot. Oop, they still connect. Great. Okay. Okay. Perfect even. Perfect even. Oh, I like archery, yeah. Actually, that's a great, my dad is a really good archer. Great Father's Day transition there. Uh, my dad, my dad used to go hunting with, with bows and arrows, uh, which I was never really into. But I just, I always thought that the bows and arrows were cool, but the hunting part I didn't really dig. Uh, he took me out hunting a few times. I just didn't, didn't like it. <laughs> I did not like it. I liked seeing animals. <laughs> that was fun. But I didn't like trying to shoot animals. And I was really, really bad at it. I never got anything. I'm actually kind of glad I never got anything, you know? But uh, that actually, that's kind of... What's funny is I found out that I needed glasses because I went hunting with my dad. Um, so what happened was we went hunting and I realized like I just kept missing. We found boar, we were hunting for boar. I didn't get any and I didn't try to, honestly, I didn't like it. But the, um, I, ca I like could never see him. My dad would be like, go, oh, there's a boar right there. And I'd be like, where? Like, what, wait, really? Like, literally right in front of you, there was a boar. And I was like, oh, yeah, I can't see him. And then we realized, okay, when we get back, you need to get your eyes checked. 
<laughs> sure enough, I had terrible vision. I couldn't see anything. <laughs> so that's how we found out that my vision was really bad. That was in like middle school. So I was pretty far along. One, two, three. Oh, wait, did I mess up somewhere? Maybe that's why his foot is slightly smaller in this one. Oh, whatever. Um, let's see, we're supposed to go from, from when we change Fuzzy Brown, we want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11 rounds of brown. So, six. so I need five more rounds of brown. I think. We will see. Um, so this week I started watching a new show uh, on Netflix that I really like. You guys might really like it too. It's called Sweet Tooth. And it's, it's kind of like an apocalyptic show a little bit, but it's very sweet, very nice. Uh, uh, it's kind of scary, but it's like really cool. There's this whole idea of animal children that like they're kids that look like animals. Like they're, they're called like hybrids. So they, the main character is a little kid that uh, he is like half human, half deer. So he's got little antlers. It's so cool. I used to read that comic when I was in um, high school and college, and I really, really liked that. So the f finding out that they, not only finding out that they were coming out with a, with a TV show, but that the TV show was already out, that this week I found that out. I was like, oh, whoa, they're doing a show for Sweet Tooth? Oh, wait, that's already out? How cool. So me and Jules have been watching it. We like have been watching it a bunch and crocheting to it. It is great. High suggestion, 10 out of 10, watch it a lot. Watch it, it is so good. Okay, so we got one, two, and then three, nine, 10, 11. We're going to round 13 with this. So this will be round 12, and then we'll do, got it, got it, okay. I got kind of sidetracked there, lost lost track of where I was, but I'm back. I'm back, baby! I think that's it, and then I think we can slip stitch. Let's see though. Yeah, we got two little feet on him. There we go. All right. So next we need to. Well, let's finish this foot up. Cut the yarn. Pull that through. And then next we can start working on our body because we got our feet done. We got our arms done. I think all we need left is our body. How fun. We're flying, guys. We're flying. Which is good. Which is very good. Coffee. Coffee. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and put these right here. Okay, no spoilers. I won't spoil anything. Does Jules know how to crochet? Yes, she does. She's learning, actually. Um, she's actually designing her first crochet pattern right now. Uh, she wants to design a pattern for club crochet. I mean, I, I asked her to do that. Uh, she's making a design for a bag. Um, Jane, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it, and thank you so much for your donation, Jane. Seriously, thank you. Monster Quack will be here keeping an eye on, on what we're making just for you. <laughs> Thanks for joining, Jane. 
Um, hello, Tamara. Tamara, Tamara. I love ya, Tamara. <laughs> Okay, so I'm on the body now. There we go. Jules knits. Yeah, she's normally a knitter, but she uh, just got into crocheting and she's working on a, uh, a crocheted bag. Um, she's She's starting with a pretty simple pattern, which is because I requested that. She wanted to do something really complicated for her first bag. And I was like, why don't you start by making a bag made out of double crochets first? And then and then when you have a good design that you like with that, move on to making one with like a fancier stitch. So she's starting with that, which I think is good too, because then it'll be a nice uh, pattern for people that are just starting to crochet that like, want to try something out but don't want something too complicated so that that pattern should be coming out like I don't know probably not for a while to be completely honest but uh, yeah we are working we're working on something there and she's learning how to crochet better and better every day she's very good at it which is suspicious <laughs> I'm like, oh, you are good at crocheting, huh? Hmm. Well, you're gonna steal my crochet times. You're supposed to be knitting. I'm supposed to be crocheting. I'm so close to, cro to starting a musical montage here. Okay. We got the head started. Do I know how to knit? I don't. I have actually no idea how to knit. I've never knit before. Um, I've never really wanted to, honestly. I just like crocheting so much. And there's so many things I want to make. So, and knitting takes so much more time than my little amigurumi takes. So I really like making amigurumi. But I should try knitting. She. Jules is determined to get me to knit something. I think if I were to knit, I would start by, uh, if, like when I started to design knit, because what I'll end up doing probably is I'll learn how to knit and then I'll want to make amigurumi with knitting. So then I'll, I think the first thing that I'd want to do is make a knit goblin. I think that'd be really fun. So I'll probably get to that eventually. Did my volume go down? It definitely could have. Let me see. Hmm. I don't think my volume of my voice went down, but maybe the volume of the background went up. So here I can, let me turn down. I can turn that down just a bit. It's hard to turn down just a bit. It's like at the very bottom of it. How's that? Maybe a little better, maybe a little worse, or let me know. I felt like forest music was pretty good for a, for a Bigfoot. My dad is pretty obsessed with Bigfoot. Um, well, not, I wouldn't say he's obsessed. He has a healthy obsession with Bigfoot. Like, he likes to watch those Bigfoot shows on like the History Channel, which, okay, quick aside, quick aside here. History Channel, History Channel, if you're watching, what are you doing? What are you doing, guys? Why are you, why are you doing why are you doing shows about Bigfoot? You're the History Channel. Like, or, or, or Ancient Aliens. What are, you, what are you doing, guys? Okay, that's a whole different aside. Uh, <laughs> that really frustrates me, though, because I'm like, you guys are supposed to be talking about history. And you're making the silliest shows where it's like, what are you doing? Or like uh, Pawn, Pawn Stars. That's a history show? So silly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> you love those shows? You know, I, I mean, no poo-poo on you. You're great. I love that you love those shows. I don't personally like those shows because I studied anthropology in college and those shows just like irritate me because the things that they end up saying, I'm like, no, because A, B, C. Um, but I do appreciate that you like those shows and that is okay. You're allowed to like those shows, especially as a guilty pleasure. I can't. I can't give you crap about liking a guilty pleasure show. There are plenty of shows that I like that are terrible. <laughs> like uh, The Circle on Netflix. Jules and I were watching that like a couple weeks ago. And th those shows are terrible. But I can't deny they're very fun to watch. Okay, so next up we want to do this. Yeah, exactly. It's amusing. Yeah, Pawn Stars is definitely amusing, but it's not it's not it's not uh history. <laughs> it's not history at all. Come on. Don't don't tell don't tell people that's history. It's not history. You know it's not. Yes, yes, it was okay, but really vapid. Absolutely, The Circle. The Circle was a very vapid show. I mean, I didn't watch it because it was like <laughs> stimulating television. It was something to put on that I didn't really need to pay attention to. And I could root for certain people. Root against other people. I like doing that. Okay, so four, and then one more. So I'm working on the face for our um, for our Bigfoot here. Pure Oh my gosh, that's so cute that your cat stole your crochet hook. Very cute. Okay, Divine Rose, have fun. I uh, hope you make a wonderful dinner. What's for dinner? Oh, well, you just probably just left. But if you happen to still, I'm very curious. What's for dinner? I want dinner. Can you make me dinner? I don't want to make dinner. Can you make it for me? Please. <laughs> All right, I want to add, I want to take this and I'll make it pop out of the top of the head. Okay. Uh, the, the Tin Man next to the bird. No, that is uh, that's actually Gandalf. <laughs> it's a pod person version of Gandalf. See, he's got his little gray hair there. Ooh. Neck crack. Mm. The neck crack. So what do you guys think about these pins, by the way? Um, this is just my first try at them. I basically just wanted to like check this website out because I want to get pins made, but I wanted to make sure that the pins from this website were good first. Uh, and then now I want to get a bunch of different kinds of pins made. So I want to get one made of an orc. Uh, like our crocheting orc. So I kind of want to get this made. I want to get a pigeon burb as a pin. I thought that'd be kind of fun. Uh, and then I was also thinking of just doing different colors of this yarn ball with the crochet hook. Um, but yeah, let me know. Do you have any ideas for, uh, well, like what kind of colors would you want if you, if I were to do this 
this pin in different colors. What would you, what would you want? I'm very curious. I'm very curious. Oh, okay, so this is supposed to be an increase. Burb pins. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm glad you agree with burb pins, because that's definitely a thing. Pink. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking pink probably is a, a good move. I, I figured people would probably want pink. Uh, pink pins. I just realized I need to cut an extra bit of this brown yarn. I actually need to cut two bits. For our hair tuft and eyebrow. Because I like to add like a big thick eyebrow. Okay. Purple. Invert the purple and green hook. Great idea. I love it. I'll do that. Yeah, I need. I think I can get like just a few different colors. That's what I was thinking, Beth. Actually, that's crazy. I was thinking the exact same thing of doing a pride colors of like just rainbow yarn ball. And then maybe the crochet hook could be just like um, one solid color that's not in the rainbow. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But it's funny that you say that. I was thinking the exact same thing. I was thinking that yesterday. Ooh, yellow pin. I like that too. Yeah, I think Bur I, I was also thinking it might be fun to do um, Yancey the Yeti in a pin form or a sticker form or something. I don't know. Just I've just been thinking about different options for our for pins and stuff. Okay, sorry. I need. I just realized I need to do an increase back here. Or maybe even just a yarn ball with a little happy face on it. Just like a, like a happy yarn ball. Three, four, five, and then an increase. Okay, now I'm on to round seven. I think I'm on round seven. Let me look here. Um, okay. All right. Seven, eight, right? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, got it. Sorry, I lost track there, but I'm back. I'm back on track. <laughs> T-Savvy, you made it to the stream and not right at the end. <laughs> Thanks for joining. And then we're going to switch for our nose. What what size bobble is this? Oh, it's a bulky bobble. Okay. Four. Ah, that's a big that's a big nose. I like it. A 
Look at that nose. Look at that snout. Oh, I like that idea, Sarah. For a pen, you mean? Okay, Beth. Thanks for joining. Hope you like the stream. Sloth is finished. Congratulations, Rebecca. That's a tough pattern. Hope you liked it. What'd you think of the face pattern for that? Okay, and then the next round is the last round. For, okay, and then I just add the face. I see. Okay, and then I'll just start adding the face here, and then uh, we can do a little coffee. I think I could. I think I could use even more coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. I like coffee. I wonder when the first time I ever had coffee was. I bet I loved it. Actually, no. I bet I hated the taste of it, but I really liked how it feels. So that's still kind of how I feel. I still like probably more milk then I have coffee <laughs> but I do like coffee Yum. I'm not addicted okay so don't tell me I'm addicted to coffee don't tell me that because I'm not probably I just have withdrawals if I don't have it <laughs> that doesn't mean anything Okay, he's coming together, right? Whoa, you you had coffee for the first time ever. What'd you think about it? Did you like it? And you're almost 32? You just had coffee for the first time? Wow, you're crazy. How'd you live? It's not an addiction if I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I don't know if that's how addictions work, but you you tell him, Sarah. Ooh, okay, Rebecca, Rebecca, are you gonna do the red panda or the rhino? The rhino's a lot easier than the red panda. Three, four, five. Uh, but if you're planning on doing all of them, maybe you want to save the easy one for last. I don't know. Seven, and then an increase. They're both great patterns. Wow, Bobby, you were 34 when you tried coffee for the first time? Bobby, do you, do you drink coffee now? Like, when you started to drink coffee for the first time, did you, did you like it a lot? 
And if so, were you like, oh my God, I need to live with, I need to have coffee every day now. Or do you just kind of sometimes drink coffee? <laughs> coffee be good, coffee be good. Mackenzie, uh, which piece am I doing now? I'm making the body of our, uh, of Bigfoot Bobby. Bigfoot Bobby's body. Okay, then we take this out and we're gonna be adding the face. Have some coffee and then add the face. But. Might be fun to do a mustache. Let's see. We'll start by adding our eyes and we'll go from there. Because I know exactly where the eyes go. Never mind, they don't. They go down here. Right? No, that looks weird. Why does that look so weird? I'll go here. Nice and close to the face. No, that's too close. I think we need to go in the middle of that. Okay. Into the center of the beige stitches around the nose. Okay, yeah, so you're supposed to go in the center of the stitches. Okay. Good job, Pass Lou. So it's going to be like this. So sometimes I do this for my patterns. Here, let me zoom in, I'll show you. Sometimes there's just not a great place to put the eye because if I put the eye here in between these two stitches, then it just looks weird. If I put it here in between those two stitches, it looks, just looks weird. So instead, I'm gonna put it right in between this stitch. So if you see this little V here, I'm gonna go right in the center of that stitch because I sometimes find that's actually the best place to put the eye. What I do is I just take the back of my needle, place it into the middle of that stitch and twist it around like that. And it opens it up a little bit, helps me put my eyeball in there. And then I just kind of like wiggle it. See on the inside. There we go. Because that I think is the right spot. Yeah, that's it. That's the right spot for the eye. And we'll do the same thing over here. Let's start with this side of the needle, and then this side of the needle. Now let's look at that. Yeah, that's where we want the eyes. I think that's better. Okay, and then we want to lock them into place. Let me zoom back out now. Whoop. <laughs> Big Fabella. I like that. You can make as many Bigfoot Bobbies as you want. Okay, next I'm going to be taking this yarn. No, wait, wait. We want to take... Let's start with this yarn to make eye of lids. So I, I usually like putting under eyelids on my eyes um, because I feel that it gives it uh, gives your characters a lot of um, like personality really easily. So basically, see, so just like a regular eye right now, but then when I go over here, look at, boom, suddenly he's a happy, suddenly that's a happy guy. He's so happy or tired, but I like to think that he's happy. Let me just double knot these. Okay. Next, other side. A coral colored Bigfoot Bobby. 
That's cool. Unique. Very unique. I like it. I like it. Anybody ever seen uh, any any Office fans out there? The show, I mean. Any fans of the show, The Office? Because there's this one scene where Creed goes, uh, when Creed becomes the boss of The Office for like a day or two, and they're like, and he and he's trying to come up with acronyms, and he goes like, Bobadi, Bobadi, and someone says, the first B should be for business, and he goes, I like it. I quote that all the time. I like it. And then Pam goes, what are you doing? I'm making acronyms. What? <laughs> Bigfoot burbs. Okay, so we got our eyes there. Next, I want to add an eyebrow. Bigfoot burbs. Everything should be burbs. Everything should be burb. We are all burb. Burb is life. So here's what I'm thinking. We add an eyebrow like that over his over his little nose, but then we have this sticking out. We'll do the same thing with this end. I'll go stitch over so it'll go like right there. And this way, you can just double knot them right here. And I'll have this little tuft of hair sticking right above his, his forehead. Let's see how this looks. Maybe if we don't like it, we can fix it, change it, whatever. And then I like to take my needle and just kind of like thread the yarn, make it more fuzzy. Uh, it kind of seems like it's coming apart though. Double knot it a little tighter. I actually just realized that tuft on the top needs to actually come out right here. And I think we need to add just a little bit more fuzz here on the top of him, in the front of his face too. Let's start by getting rid of the tuft at the top of the head. Like that. And then add some more fur. Right, and then we'll have like a little tuft of hair coming out the top, hopefully. Is that enough hair? No, we can add we can add one more, one or two more of these strings. In fact, I think we can just use the same ends that we just double knotted with. I like this music, whatever we're listening to right now. Hello. 
Hello, cold-blooded adventurers. <laughs> cold-blooded adventurers. There we go. Now Bigfoot Bobby's got some hair. Bobby. Huh? What do we think? Like it? I like it. Hey, Misty Wind Windmaker. Welcome. Okay, so now I'm on to 10, around 10 through 12. I think we'll add on the bow tie, or the tie after we finish um, sewing everything together, making the body and everything. Mario and Luigi burbs, that's fun. That'd be really fun. More burbs. Everything should be burbs. <laughs> all burbs, all the time. Bye, Iris. Thanks for joining. I like that. Well, I guess he does. I guess Bigfoot Bobby here doesn't have too much of a belly. But my dad does have a bit of a belly. Although he's on a diet right now that apparently is going really well. But my dad has been on a diet uh, pretty much my whole life, on and off. Mostly off. <laughs> is the club crochet, is the club challenge suitable for all ages? I would say yeah. It's, I think it's suitable for all ages. Um, I mean, as long as you know how to crochet. So maybe not all all ages, because I think a three-year-old would have maybe a difficult time crocheting, but I think it's suitable in the sense that it's not, um, I don't think it's inappropriate for any age. <laughs> Hamilton, dude, welcome. How you doing, my friend? Hamilton is an artist that uh, is lives here in San Francisco too. Um, I guess you haven't really. I wonder, have you been illustrating many people on the on the train recently? I'm su I'm assuming you probably haven't because everybody's wearing a mask or you're not riding the train very much. But welcome to the live stream, Hamilton. We got, we got Bigfoot Bobby coming together. You always miss these. Yeah, that's all good. Most people, I mean, I don't think everybody watches them. Some people do, some people don't. Oh, 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 Misty Windmaker says. Yeah, it hasn't yielded much. Just invented a crocheted cat toy. At least I haven't seen anyone else called a sky raisin. It's a toy. The, it's a raisin stuffed with catnip and with wings. <laughs> Do you put it on like a pipe cleaner or something, and you just like let them play with it? You could probably put it on a little motor, maybe. 
Because imagine if you had a little raisin on the end of this, and then it had a motor that just like spun it around. My cats would go crazy for that, I bet. Okay, we are on, ugh, where am I? What round am I on? One, two, three. Am I supposed to do, do three rounds? Yes. Okay, cool, I'm on round 14. Ladybug pattern. Man, a lot of requests, Panny. <laughs> I mean, I can try doing a ladybug pattern though. Um, the dots obviously are gonna be tricky, but five, six. I think that kind of sounds like a fun little challenge. I think we'll do a month of month of bugs. That'd be pretty fun. Four, five, six, seven. Bigfoot Bobby earrings? Dude, okay, so here, what if you did Bigfoot Bobby earrings, but like he was like holding on to the string that was attached to the earring? I don't know, how, how big was that Bigfoot Bobby that you made, Mackenzie? Like this big then? Because too big, you don't want like an earring that's like this big, you know? I can't. how tiny did you make it? Oh, that's a good idea, Misty. That's a, that's a good idea. Bobble stitches for the dots for the ladybug. I like that. Or buttons, yeah, that's a great idea. Dude, <laughs> Hamilton, thank you. You definitely did not need to do that, but I obviously appreciate it. Hamilton, so here's what here's here's what we do for for people that donate, especially donate that big. We put out something on the live stream just for you. Now, if you have a request, make it now. Otherwise, I'm just going to put something out that I think you're going to dig. And I'm going to go through the box of the big the big boys. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, let's do this. You're going to love this, Hamilton. We'll put out, this one's for you, bud. Thank you so much for the donation, dude. I really appreciate that. So this is going out for you, Hamilton, since it was such a big donation. This pattern uh, is coming out very soon. It's a dragon, a dope dragon. Look how cool he is, look at his little feet. So I've shown this in the live stream, honestly, I've shown it uh, pretty often. But it's currently in the rough drafts. If anybody wants to try crocheting this, uh, I'm looking for people to give me feedback on it. Um, you can find it by going to clubcrochet.com slash rough draft, or you can uh, search for dragon on the website and you should be able to find it there. Uh, but look at the wings. God, they're so cool. So cool. And the feet. So this guy's gonna be out here just for you, Hamilton. Thank you so much for your help. Thanks for your donation. So this guy is actually going to probably be a uh, a character for Stitch that you can play as a dragon. I think that'd be really fun, right? To have like a dragon as a character. So I've been working on the stats on what I would do for a dragon to add it to the game. I think I'd add like, I think it'd be pretty expensive as a character, but uh, really powerful, obviously. Thank you, Hamilton. I appreciate that a lot. Right? Isn't he cool? He's dope. He's so cool. Also, shockingly quick to make. I would say it probably takes like maybe two hours, two and a half hours to make it to make one. So they are like really quick because the wings take a while, but the legs are pretty quick to make up and the uh uh, both the back and the front legs are not that bad. And then the body's all made in one piece. So the head and it just goes down to the tail and then you just sew on the pieces. So it's actually not as difficult to make as, as it looks. I mean, it's, you know, it's more difficult to make than a than like a goblin, but it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. I'm very excited to come out with that pattern. That's going to be, uh, I think that pattern's going to come out in early August. 
uh, with the Kickstarter. It's going to be like my my new pattern. I'm going to be like, hey, if you like this pattern, get it here on the Kickstarter. Ba 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 ba. I think that's going to be the plan. Also, I made a new relic for Stitched that is pretty cool. I made it last or a couple nights ago. Let me show you it. I think you'll like it. There we go. Wait. There we go. Okay, we're going to have to add the arms and stuff next. But before I get to that, I'd love to show you this thing that I made last this week. Check this out. So I've been working on uh, my patterns for Stitched because I wanted to do that, this big like Kickstarter thing for it. Um, what's a Kickstarter? A Kickstarter is like a project. Uh, it's like a um, a website where you can like support a project, basically. So I'll be like, hey, you know, you, you it's it's gonna essentially be pre-ordering the the game Stitched, but if the Kickstarter doesn't succeed then the game doesn't get created so it's very uh like necessary to use to support um i'll explain it a little bit more soon though but yeah check out this relic that i made so i've been working on the design for the relic uh, i wanted to add like some different design for the the gem holders here and what's cool is he's reversible so i have a different face on the other side isn't that cool Yeah. Oh, yeah, I definitely think you're right, Hamilton. Check it out. I have a green one. I got a green one and a red one so far. So I definitely want to do a blue one would be cool. A gold, gold dragon would be really cool. I think I should totally do a gold dragon. Or a black dragon or something. Um, is that a boss? No. So this, Sarah... And we'll talk about this in the next live stream a bit more. Uh, in in the game of Stitched, uh, there is this thing on the board called the relic. And when you uh, what you need to do in the game is you go to the relic and you cast a magic spell. And if you're successful in casting the magic spell, you add one of these gems to the um, outside of the relic. And if you fill it up with all five of these gems, then you win the game. See, so they all come out. And there's different colors. So blue is for one team, and then there's a red one for another team. And then you just pop them in the top. Pop them in the sides. So that that is stitched. Or that's that's the that's what this is for. It's for the game. It's like it's like one of the ways you can win the game is by casting spells into the relic. Like that. Boop. There's the face. I want to add a tongue. To the bottom of the of this side of the face, though, and I was thinking about adding two fangs on this side, just to give it a little bit more like um, three dimensionality to the faces. So, yeah, we'll talk a lot more about stitched uh, in a um, in a live the next live stream, which will be in uh, I guess in not next Sunday, but next. Uh, I think the 30th. So what is that? What's June 30th? I think it's a Wednesday. So that's when we're going to be doing a stitched live stream. It was going to be today, but man, I just couldn't. I just couldn't today. And I just thought it'd be way more fun to do uh, to do something for Father's Day. Yes, basically a hooked D&D. It, it, it is very crochet D&D themed. It's really cool. I think it's one of the coolest things I've ever made. Um, when people say like, "What? What's the thing you're most proud of crocheting?" I usually tell them stitched. I think it's the coolest thing ever, and it's not like an individual thing. It's like a whole. It's a whole thing. I'm a bob. There we go. So we got pipe cleaner made. I put in the arm, and then we put it on the side. So let's figure out where we want this arm. We'll probably put it. I mean, go 
one arm. Here? No, let's do a little lower, like right here. Try that. Is that gonna be too low for the arm? Maybe. No, that's, I think that's good. The boot tongue would totally work, Sunshine. That's a great idea. Yes, it is a Wednesday. Okay, cool. Yeah, so June 30th, we're going to be doing a live stream crochet along for Stitch. So we'll be making some pieces for it. I'm going to be doing, uh, I need to make a new back background for um, the cover art for the book. So we're going to be crocheting, uh, I think we're going to be crocheting an orc with a with a bow and arrow and maybe maybe doing some, some felt work for a backdrop. I don't know yet. I kind of wanted to do it in a light box. I thought it'd be really fun to make like a little box just for this. But then I tried to like take, I set up a light box. Um, I set up like a, what's it called? Not a, I guess a light box, like a, like a, a, a shoe box, you know, like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, whatever. I tried to set it up, but then I realized that there's just not, enough room for me to like mess around because I might need to like do the picture a little bit of a little bit more width or a little bit more height so I didn't want to like pigeonhole myself into anything so instead I decided to do it just in this light box and we'll build the whole set in here and then we'll take a picture of it for the cover art for the book and the box for the book or for the game I'll explain it more next live stream though something like that is that too far it feels like it's really far away no i guess it's on either side of them right it's pretty good a boo box is that what they're called a boo box no okay Now let's sew these arms on. How long have we been going for? Wow, it's already been two hours? Feels like it's been, we've been only going for like an hour. So we're gonna go one, two, three, wait. That's gonna be the center. And I don't think I need to stuff the arm up because the arm's not really going to be, you know, I, I it's so thin that I think we're con we're fine with just the pipe cleaner used for the stuffing for the arm. A display, a diorama. Yes, yeah, I like that. A diorama. Okay. So Hamilton, I know that you crochet. Have you ever crocheted um, any amigurumi yet? You, have you crocheted a goblin? If not, why not? Sarah says, cool trick with the pipe cleaner. You know, I got to come out with a tutorial about how I use pipe cleaners because I use them for so many different things. I mean, I use them for things like what I just did. That's uh, like a skeleton for your for the arms so that you can be bendable. But I also use it for things like weapons and for, for um, just sturdiness on the inside or for making them. I even have used it for making a mouth open and close. It's very very uh, versatile pipe cleaners. They're very useful for a lot of different things. A lot of different things. And now his arm can move. See? Hello. Hello. You have made a goblin. Okay, dope. 
Dude, we can even play a game of Stitched with your set for Stitched versus my set for Stitched. Maybe we can play it in a week or so. I'm assuming you're still in SF, right? Yeah, I, I think I saw a picture of you with, uh, yeah. Ah, okay. The problem with this wool yarn is it just gets so like fuzzy. There's fuzzes, there's fuzzles everywhere. Yeah, I think that's the next Amigurumi 101 tutorial I'm gonna do is for how to use pipe cleaners. Um, and then we'll do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, why not? How is it outside? Is it, is it nice out there? It's a little overcast. I haven't gone outside yet. Have you gone outside? Hey, if you're in the live stream right now, you gone outside yet? Maybe it's too hot where you are. Here, I think it's actually too cold. But that's summer for you in San Francisco. Summers in San Francisco are just weird. They are cold, like always. I don't think I've ever had a summer here. I've lived here for like a, for a decade now. Actually, more than a decade. And it is always cold in the summer. I mean, there's a few days here and there that'll be nice and warm, but <laughs> most of the time it's like cold summers. It's fall that gets San Francisco in October. Mm, it's great. My favorite, favorite time of the year, October, sep September to November really in San Francisco is just the best weather ever. Ooh, that's a fun idea, Blueberry Butterfly. That's a great idea. Doing like some kind of bulky, bulky wool yarn to make it like really, a really big Bigfoot. Oh, I kind of wish I did that now. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go buy some, some like really bulky yarn for this. That seems like a lot of fun. Um, Hamilton. You have gone outside. You just got a scooter and we're riding around. I haven't ridden a scooter in so long. You guys remember those Razor scooters? I think I have actually like done irreparable damage to my shins because of Razor scooters. <laughs> I'm surprised they never put guards on those. Maybe they did. I just never got one with the guards. I would always try to do that little like spin, you know, like you spin it around so it'd be like you'd be like you'd be like riding it and then you kick so it'd spin like that. But then you'd always hit your shin. Oh my gosh, hated that. It's raining outside, where are you, Bergen? Where do you live where it's raining? Are June showers, is June showers a thing? I thought it was April showers. Okay, so we got the main bit of our body done here, so we can just, I'll just go ahead and stuff it up with all of our excess threads. Well, I need a little bit of this for a belly button, but the rest of it can be in there. Oh, that's right, in Australia it's cold. Nova asks, could you make a tutorial on how to create an amigurumi pattern? Yes, I do have plans on that. It probably won't be till next year till I really start to um, actively do that. But I do uh, think that is going to be a, um, a tutorial series on the website. See, so I like giving a belly button. I always like doing belly buttons on my little. Maybe that's a little low for a belly button. Let's do it a little higher. Yeah. You 
You're definitely right. Wow, it's raining in Minnesota. Hmm. You got thunder and lightning too? Wow. That's cool. You have a question, Blueberry. Blueberry Butterfly, what kind? What question you got for me? Go right here. Let's try like that for the belly button. We still gotta add a, try adding a tie to him. When did I start crocheting? I started crocheting in high school. So I started crocheting, I think it was junior year of high school. Was that the second one? No, so sophomore year of high school. Yeah, sophomore year of high school. Um, so I was 15, 14 maybe. No, probably like 15. Um, and I started well, I just started to get really crafty in high school in general, making just a bunch of things for different people. And then I found something crocheted online and I was like, I can, I can make that. Um, and I would make little crocheted things for this girl that I had a crush on. <laughs> it worked out in the sense that we started dating. It didn't work out in the sense that it was a good relationship, but it did work out for that reason. <laughs> So yeah, I've been crocheting now for like almost 15 years. It's a very long time. Very long time to be addicted to crocheting. Piggy bank started at 13. Great age to start crocheting. Long time to long time to learn. Bobby started at 10. Wow, that's very young. That's awesome. Crocheting is wonderful. I I really like the the thought about how many people started crocheting during the uh, during the quarantine because you know, it's just a nice uh nice thought that that during a terrible time, a lot of people got a brand new craft and hopefully something that really means a lot to them, you know? It's a cool idea. It's a cool thing to think about. I'm gonna stuff him just a little bit now. You just started this year, there you go. You found a brand new craft that I'm telling you, you're gonna get addicted to, it's the best. Hamilton started at 30. Wow, a lot of people starting early though. That's crazy. I say it's never too late to learn to crochet. Jules just started crocheting, she's 30. Okay, so I think, yeah. We're just gonna cut these pipe cleaners. We're gonna use these for the legs. Now heads up, if you are cutting pipe cleaners, I'm using my little fancy scissors for this. I do not suggest that. They do wear your scissors down. You're gonna have to like resharpen your scissors if you start cutting pipe cleaners the way that I'm doing it, but I am too lazy to not do that, so. But I'm just letting you know, if you want to cut your pipe cleaners, that's how you do it. Whoa, I just realized my hair looks all crazy. Why didn't you tell me? Looks like a evil scientist. I need to actually get a haircut really bad this week. I have an appointment for Wednesday. We'll see how it goes. Whoa, Chirp a Little, you've been crocheting for 20 years? Wow. Okay, so this, go in there. in that will go on the bottom of them perfect okay do the same with this one i think i have one more round of single of crochets for the body and then i can start to um oh thank you rebecca thank you
Oh boy, do you guys hear that? Hold on, I gotta check that. Jules is not here, which means that that was the cats. Making a lot of noise. What you doing? You wanna come in here? You wanna say hi? Jimbo wants to say hello. Come here, say hi. You wanna say hi? Hey. You hear him purring? Yeah. Don't you hand light box? No. You're giant. You're giant, Jimbo. A giant kitty. Thank you. Wow, you're so sweet. Hello. Jules is my girlfriend. <laughs> and she is out. Um, she is spending Father's Day with her dad. Okay, bud. You're so cute. Okay, yes, you're very cute. He's like nuzzling into my arm. I'm gonna see if I can let him, maybe he can just chill on our lap and not be too distracting. Sometimes, sometimes I can get him to chill. Can you just hang out here? Yeah? Okay, we're gonna try to get him to just hang out right here on my lap. Oh my God, this is so cute, you gotta see this. Look at him. You see how cute he is? The lighting's weird, but he's just so cute. Okay. Back to crocheting. We gotta finish this, bud. And then I can hang out with you. We can play all day. You're slipping. Okay, yes, hello. <laughs> what are you doing? What do you think you're doing? No, that's not a toy. Jiminy. <laughs> Stop it. Hold on, I'm almost done. Hold on, I just need a few more stitches, Jimbo. And then you can take this yarn. You can have it, I'll give it to you. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. Dude, Hamilton, thank you. Wow, another 25 from Hamilton, dude. I really appreciate that, thank you so much. Here, we'll put out their green dragon for you too. Ah! Jimbo, you're stealing the yarn, don't, don't, don't. Hold on, we're gonna go right here. I hear a Phoebe too out there. He is a beautiful cat. Dude, Hamilton, thank you again. I, I I don't know if you're still here, but thank you. I'm gonna put this dragon out here for you. We got two dragons now. We'll put them right here. Surrounded by dragons. Oh my gosh, I can feel. Oh man, things are really going off the rails here with all these cats. Now Phoebe's here. Okay. Okay, next we gotta add in these pipe cleaners onto the bottom so we can sew our feet around them. So we'll go, hi <laughs> Jimbo, hello, <laughs> he's pushing me. Okay. Now this is the hard part is that we, I really like to twist the inside of the pipe cleaner if I'm able to, but I can't get in, can't, I can't get, I can't get in there, twist it. Oh well, we'll set to sew it around this pipe cleaner. It won't get like pulled out because we'll sew it around it. This foot will go like this. We'll sew the leg on and then we'll stuff him and and all will be well in the world of Bigfoot Bobby. You have four octopi now? Dude, Gwyneth, you're going crazy. You're crazy. 
All right, so we're sewing on our left leg. We'll just have to go around these. Actually, I think that's supposed to go right there. And then, yeah. Hi, buddy. Uh, what? Oh, okay. Do you hear him? Do you hear him talking? He's having a real hard time, aren't you, bud? Yeah. Yeah. Because he just wants to play. Yeah, you do. Okay. We will play. Okay. Hi, bud. He's sick of me not giving him attention. Aren't you? Hi. Hi. He did. <laughs> what are you doing in there? Hey, bud. I'm working. Hey, 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 what are you doing? We're <laughs> He's just like, stop crocheting and hang out. Okay, get out. Sorry, you can't go in there. Okay. You're good. You're a good boy. You're gonna stay right here. Okay. We're almost done. We're almost done. I don't know if we're gonna get to making a bow tie, a tie and stuff on this because Jimbo wants attention. He's so cute. He's so cute. Okay. <laughs> it's my stream now. Yes, hi. Oh my God, he's praying so loud. We call him Motorboat Jim because of his purrs. Good old motor, where are you going now? Okay, see you in a couple seconds when you get bored again, you wanna hang out. Oh, yep, here he comes, he's back already. Here's the other leg. My stream. Why are you live streaming? I want to hang out with you. Okay, bye, Blueberry. Thanks for joining. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You want to say bye? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What? I'm doing something. <laughs> yes? Okay. Don't. No. Don't go on the computer. Stop. Oh my gosh, Jiminy. I'm going to have to kick you out. Just to finish. Right here. Right there. Stay. Stay, please. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah? Oh. Don't bite me. 
He's trying to bite my leg. He wants to play so bad. I promise. <laughs> oh my gosh. So crazy.